Cyclone Kiralee closing in on Queensland on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for January 25th. So finally we have our full complement of three tropical cyclones that we were expecting to form for some time and they've finally done it, Kiralee and Candice on either side of the southern hemisphere there. Uh, Candice moving through Mauritius earlier in the evening last night and Kiralee on approach now to Queensland. It's 127 days until Atlantic hurricane season begins and there's a long front across the United States right now which is causing some issues with flash flooding this evening. Uh, elsewhere in the ocean though it's fairly quiet with an extratropical storm off Newfoundland. 110 days until the eastern Pacific hurricane season begins and there's a big extratropical low further north of Hawaii there and a lot of precipitation moving into Southern California right now as well. Apart from that though, it's fairly quiet across the ocean. In the Western Pacific, we're still on alert just in case we see that little bit of a uh, system try and develop in the Philippine Sea, but no signs of that yet and very little activity at all in the whole Western Pacific right now. And in the North Indian Ocean, things look similarly quiet, especially so actually. So Cyclone Kiralee has strengthened substantially, finally got that center sorted out, got named by the Bureau of Meteorology and is getting close to landfall already. Only about 12 to 18 hours away, so things are going to get pretty busy soon. Angrek uh, did go on to strengthen quite a lot and reach a category 1 peak by the looks of things and Candice moving just past Mauritius right now and a 30% chance now to its northeast another system that could form and interact with Angrek as it gets close to that area. Let's look at Kiralee first of all, it's just 178 kilometers from the Whitsundays, 202 from Bowen, 238 from Air, 284 from Townsville and 290 from Mackay. Cyclone warnings are in effect from Serena northwards to Innisfail and inland in quite a few locations as well. The storm is moving relatively quickly at the moment, moving westerly pretty much, and we expect that landfall will be very close to Townsville in the next 12 hours possibly. This is Candice right now, class 2 warning still in effect for Mauritius this morning. It's 137 kilometers southeast of Maheborg, 168 from Port Louis, 323 from Reunion, 477 from Rodrigues which had warnings but they were lifted and 2595 from Isle Amsterdam way down in the upper latitudes of the uh, southwest Indian Ocean. We put that there basically because there was nowhere else to uh, mark up there on that distance calculator. The storm of course has uh, caused quite a bit of rainfall there. Let's take a look at satellite imagery then. First, uh, uh, killer, oh goodness me, Kiralee and I don't know what I was saying there and it's slowly moving westwards right now I say slowly but it's actually moving at a fair distance uh, compared to what it was doing in the previous few days it's still some distance away from reaching land the center of the storm is pretty well clear there the northern side is certainly much more bulked up than the southern side is as a matter of fact south side of the storm barely any convection at all the north side some very deep convection extremely deep in some areas and that's where all of the rainfall will be right now by the looks of things some cloud tops there reaching the minus 90s and quite a lot into the minus 80s there the purple colors south side as you can see really struggling and indeed the center is somewhat exposed there as well as we continue to look through these satellite loops that you can find on the force 13 website so if you're south of Townsville, you'll see it in the distance, but you probably won't be getting very much. Uh, the radar there shows some significant rainfall, especially to the northwestern side of the storm, uh, moving in towards land now. In this fail, northwards of their cairns, could be getting some really strong, heavy rainfall shortly. Now this is Candice, which is not looking quite as good, um, but still has that circulation going, and it's just east of Mauritius, southeast of Mauritius now. Uh, some big cloud tops, most Mostly avoiding the islands which is good news uh, and indeed the strongest winds will be on the eastern side which won't be affecting Mauritius 
Nonetheless, there could still be some potentially destructive winds, especially if uh, uh, buildings haven't been prepared. Uh, and you can see there it is looking a little bit of a shell of a cyclone, really blowing itself apart a little bit on those latest images. And I do imagine it won't have a very long life and it will uh, complete an extropical transition in a couple of days. There's radar imagery, Reunion and Mauritius there, getting a little bit of rainfall, not that much actually right now, just a little bit in those latest frames. And the eastern side is certainly the strongest. Now this is Angrek, uh, the strongest storm, you'd have thought we'd have covered it a lot more but it's the one that's going to get forgotten in this sequence because this is the strongest storm but it's not affecting anyone which is good news. There it is right now, category 1, 90 miles per hour, argument as to whether it may have reached category 2 status, that's something we'll have to review, it may well have done that and still looking quite decent on this satellite imagery as it throws up another big burst of convection on the western side there, uh, stretching around a little bit towards the northern side. Eastern side there looking a little bit bare in those latest frames, we'll have to wait and see whether that convection comes back and whether it might have another sustained attempt at category 2 status. Well, look at the uh, microwave imagery. You can clearly see both cyclones, Angrek and Kiruli, on the right-hand side, um, and Kiruli getting much closer towards landfall in Australia now. And there is uh, Candice, a much broader, extremely broad system uh, in terms of its influence extending from northern Madagascar all the way down towards the south. Sea surface temperatures are still gradually declining in the Pacific, Eastern Pacific, anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere really. Uh, they generally bottom out at around February. Here's the Atlantic uh, getting close to its minimums as well. Still a few spots there getting close to 28 degrees. Western Pacific also looking quite good in the Philippine Sea, west of uh, Guam. Temperatures towards Palau still 28 degrees and maybe a little bit more on top of that. Obviously in the upper latitudes really not so much. North Indian Ocean still has a hot spot near the Maldives, north of there, around 30 to 32 degrees Celsius, stretching to the western coast of India, and also in the Bay of Bengal, some good temperatures there in the low latitudes. Southwest Indian Ocean piping hot around Madagascar's west coast, over 30 degrees Celsius, Mauritius and Reunion still got decent temperatures even after this second storm, 28 degrees or so, and to its east, a pool of warmer water there as well. Gulf of Carpentaria piping hot, Coral Sea also very warm, 30 degrees plus. I'm sure we all know by now that Kiralee is nowhere near as strong as it could have been given these conditions. And the South Pacific, extremely warm temperatures there, north of Vanuatu and eastwards, over 30 to 32 degrees Celsius there in a few spots, especially north of Fiji. Let's take a look at how they compare to average then, and in a few locations you'd be surprised to see they're a little bit below average, especially around northern Australia. But further east, uh, towards uh, New Caledonia and Fiji, the South Pacific, very warm compared to average. The Southwest Indian Ocean is a little bit uh, light and dark there, uh, the warmest waters in the central part of the Indian Ocean in the subtropical latitudes. Eastern Pacific still holding on to somewhat of an El Nino, but much cooler temperatures further south there in the Southeast Pacific. Oceanic heat content is looking decent still for the Southwest Pacific of course, around uh, north of Fiji and uh, Samoa, extremely high values. In the Western Pacific still holding on to reasonable values, anything green or more is reasonable and it's a little bit more than that as well around Guam, Eastern Pacific, just that tiny little bit left over from last season. Let's check the computer models then, this is the GFS out to five days and you can see both storms, uh, Candice on the left and Angrek on the right hand side, Angrek continuing onwards there, feels like it's been around for a long time now, gradually crossing the basin west southwesterly to southwesterly in the end and being hemmed southwards by another cyclone possibly forming, that's the 30% chance that we have there, but neither of these two systems are expected to affect land, so hopefully that will remain the case, but models being as they have been recently, they haven't been very good actually, so we'll have to keep watching. Here's Kiralee landfall very soon, within 12 hours possibly, near Townsville. A fairly broad system, strongest winds on the northern side could be getting up towards hurricane force, moves inland, no call anymore for it to recurve down towards Brisbane, uh, although we are seeing 
some, as a matter of fact, it still does, I think, or some of its energy does, actually. The center of it itself moves westerly. And then another system eventually forming near the end of that loop towards the east near northern Vanuatu as well. So that's another interesting thing to look out for. That's within five days. And here's the Western Pacific, GFS also throwing up still a little lifeline for a potential tropical storm. It would be extremely messy if it did, but there it is once again uh, in the Philippine Sea. It's not the first time we've seen something like this, so uh, big question marks on that one as to whether we'll actually get a tropical cyclone. It can be done in January, fairly rare, uh, but certainly not too uncommon. Now this is the rainfall expectations over the next seven days for the Australian region and still a few places are expecting elevated amounts but I also want to point attention out towards the Darwin area which could also receive some um, other rainfall not to do with the tropical cyclone unrelated getting up towards 300 or maybe a little bit more than that millimeters over there but look east towards the landfall north of the landfall of Kiralee we could be looking at rainfall of up to 400 millimeters uh, towards the Cairns Innisfail area and towards the south inland towards the southwest near the landfall zone getting up above 250 millimeters nonetheless regardless of the storm not heading for Brisbane anymore we are still looking at possible Possibly up to four inches there which is a hundred millimeters for the general area surrounding Brisbane and maybe uh, half of that 50 millimeters in the city well in the longer range looking at the southwest Indian Ocean these two tropical cyclones once again Angrek continuing to extend its life into February uh, but it doesn't last much longer after that it decays and dies away as does that second cyclone that follows in right behind it It's well to the east of Rodrigues, so they shouldn't be any threat to land either of them That second system briefly tr getting towards hurricane status maybe twice actually yep there it is again possibly its strongest peak there in early February Looking towards Western Australia, there's still been one or two signals about a potential tropical cyclone forming here. I don't even know, this might come from the energy of uh, Kiralee, but I'm just speculating. Becomes a tropical cyclone there around the 2nd or 3rd of February as it moves close to Derby towards the west and starts to move offshore uh, by the time we get towards the end of that 10 day period. Still long range and very uncertain and at the moment I would say unlikely that we'll see this scenario. Well, what happens to that other system in the South Pacific? Well, it gets itself going. It slaloms through the islands of Vanuatu as a powerful cyclone, actually getting to Category 3 status at least there by the looks of things. And then it slows down in pace as it moves well to the south of Fiji and Tonga towards the southeast. And could that be another system there as well around the 31st? Possibly a brief landfall near Cairns and then that system's energy resumes and moves back out to sea in early February and possibly redevelops. Still question marks over that one as well. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all of our items as well as our full season individual storm animations on request at any time as well as our still waiting for Hone t-shirts still available all the time. Well, in the Silly Range, this is what we're looking at in the Southwest Indian Ocean. Could there be yet another cyclone formation? I think the answer might be yes, or it may be half yes. The GFS Super Long Range here, day 10 to 16, has a low pressure system there, cyclonic, drifting westwards, large, doesn't quite get to tropical cyclone status by the end of that run, but still an interesting thing to look at there, but it is extremely long range, and I wouldn't worry about that one at least for a good while. So let's take a look at the Australian region, looking closely at that Western Australian system slowly moving off the coast and losing a lot of its energy actually, and then that second system actually moving back in towards Queensland, so we're going to have another situation potentially in early February, like the two that we've had so far this season, let's hope not, but that is very long range, watch that one again in the Coral Sea, very broad system, tries to get itself together, succeeds in the end, and quite south landfall there as well, uh, I think that might be near Gladstone uh, potentially and then moving inland. Still a very long way out, it is the Silly Range for a reason. 
And then this mature cyclone, the one that reached category 3 status near Vanuatu, starts to pull southwards and ends up giving New Zealand a run for its money in that long range. A very powerful storm still at that latitude and uh, still holds on to tropical status for a while before turning post-tropical almost at the latitude of the North Island of New Zealand. But once again, very long range, big uncertainty, big unlike uh, un uh improbability that's the word i was looking for as it drifts southwards there and turns post-tropical and eventually there it is full frontal well back on this day we only have to take a short trip to last year when we were looking at cyclone chiniso which was uh, in the middle of its erratic track just emerging off the coast of madagascar and strengthening again reaching category one status on this day as it was stalling pretty much slowly drifting westwards as it emerged off the coast of southwestern madagascar the storm got to high-end Category 1 status in the end, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and it was the only thing active on this day in 2023, a busy and interesting year in the Southern Hemisphere. And that's not to say we're quiet now. We've got three storms active, but in the Atlantic, the first name this year is Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Aletta, and in the Central Pacific, we are still waiting for Hone. We're code orange because of Cyclone Kiralee and uh, landfall very soon, I expect code orange will remain. Iwiniar is the next name in the Western Pacific and Rimal is next in the North Indian Ocean. Candice makes it storm number four for this year and we're nearly at the end of the first month already, believe it or not. In the Australian region now, the next name is Lincoln. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, it's Yongu and in the South Pacific, it's Nat. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.